past week, I had to write a, a brief article uh, for the Church Magazine reporting on Junior Camp Reunion. Uh, and the request also included, give us one photo, just one. Uh, I hadn't taken hundreds of pictures on that day, but I had an okay selection. Some of the games, some of the craft, some of the food, some of the meeting, but one photo that would capture all of the day. I had a great photo of Kiva and a little boy called Han. Han had brought several Nerf guns, you know, the fire we kind of foam bullets and he was there armed to the teeth and he'd given one to Keith and it was a great wee shot of them just posing uh, it captured certainly the friendship and the happiness of the day but in the end I couldn't quite decide uh, which one to pick uh, so I sent them a few and the editor of the magazine he, he can have that headache he can choose whatever one he wants uh, but if a challenge just to choose one one photo if we were to set uh, look the author of this gospel, uh, a similar challenge. Give us, give, give us one photo, one incident that captures the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Could he do it? And I think he comes very close to that, certainly, in, in what's before us today in, in the healing of uh, Bartimaeus. Uh, he, he gives us this one incident uh, and I think there's something here which captures the whole mission of the Lord Jesus. Yes, it seems like a very brief, maybe insignificant incident for others who are passing by. But, but through this, we can answer the, the three big questions about Jesus. Who is he? Why has he come? What does it mean to follow him? First of all, let's take a look at the background in this photo. We're at the outskirts of a city. The gates are just kind of visible there in, in the background. It's the city of Jericho in verse 35. Jericho is situated just 18 miles northeast of Jerusalem, and Jesus is heading for Jerusalem. He, he goes on boldly on that journey. Uh, he has that full knowledge there in verse 31 to 33. He's going to be delivered to the Gentiles. He is going to be mocked and insulted and spat on. He is going to be scourged and killed. And on the third day, rise again. Notice something else in the background here, verse 35, that there's more here than Jesus and his disciples. There's this great multitude. Well, and why are there so many in this picture? What's going on? And uh, well, it clues really in the context. Um, if we're sticking to the analogy of one photo, the clue is in the date. Um, back in the old days, you may have had a, a camera and you could maybe set the date and it would actually come printed then on the photo. Of course, that's all ancient history now and you've got, got the camera on your phone and you look at the picture and you maybe pull up details uh, and then you see, oh, that's when it was taken and that's where it was taken. And when? When is this one taken? Well, it's just before Passover. Jesus is arriving just on time uh, for Passover. And so he's not the only one. There are thousands and thousands of people making their way to Jerusalem. Uh, they're from all over Palestine. They, they come, and even further afield, they come. And at Passover, they're going to remember the great deliverance that God wrought for their forefathers in the exodus from Egypt. They're all going up to Jerusalem, They're singing the psalms of ascent as they go, psalms of praise to God, singing about God's forgiveness, God's mercy, God's keeping of them. And yet they're doing more than singing. Uh, verse 37, they're talking. They're talking about Jesus. Uh, and this blind beggar who we know from Mark's account is Bartimaeus, uh, he can't see that, but he hears. And he hears that Jesus is actually there. He, he's with them. First question, who is he? Who is Jesus? Well, Jesus of Nazareth. That's what he heard, verse 37. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is simply the Greek version of the word Joshua. 
meaning saviour or God saves. It was an ordinary name at the time. Many other boys, many other men would have had the name Jesus. Even Barabbas shared that name. There's a Jesus justice uh, mentioned in Colossians 4 verse 11. Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Wow. No. Nazareth. No. Uh, it, it was a uh, Nowhereville. You know, it's an insignificant town in uh, Lower Galilee. Uh, not until after the resurrection of Jesus, you know, did Nazareth, Nazareth become famous for its son. Uh, the title in itself would not have given much away. Jesus of Nazareth. Who is he? And Luke, really, he's been answering that question from the very first verse in his gospel account. He's been setting in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us. Luke 1, verse 1. He's been writing an orderly account for the most excellent Theophilus. Luke 1, verse 3. And so he starts with the birth of John the Baptist as a forerunner to the Messiah. And then he writes about the birth of the Messiah, the genealogy of the Messiah, and then into the ministry which begins at his baptism when Christ is filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and I, I trust you feel privileged that you've been on this journey with Luke throughout this gospel. Uh, and we've followed with Christ and his, his teaching and his miracles. And they're all signs that point to who he is, his identity. People talked about him. For example, Luke 5, verse 26, And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. So listen to the crowd as they're going up to Jerusalem, talking about Jesus. I seen him cast out a demon. It's amazing. I seen him heal this guy. He was sick. I heal I seen him heal this other guy. He was lame. I had leprosy and he healed me. They're talking about Jesus. I heard there's this one girl, she actually died before he got there, but still he raised her from the dead. Oh, that reminds me. There was that widow's son from Nain. He raised him from the dead. That was a funeral like no other. There was no burial. But the boy was alive again at the end. Other things may be more controversial. I hear he heals on the Sabbath day. Our Pharisees are not a fan of that. One of his disciples, one of his close ones, one of the twelve, as they call them, he's a tax collector. Can't understand that one. He claims to be able to forgive sins. Well, that's some claim. He's claiming to be God there. Not so sure about that. There's talk, there's talk about Jesus. What he did was amazing. And Bartimaeus, he's he's picking up yes he is he's here his life and ministry has been extraordinary his name and his hometown ordinary but the things he says and does they're, they're out of this world and suddenly here he is and he's in the crowd it's him it's Jesus of Nazareth We turn our attention to this blind beggar, to Bartimaeus. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Not just once again, verse 39, he cried out, All the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Who is Jesus? Son of David. Descended from David's line, the son of promise. The son who will... Come and save God's people from their sins. In the Old Testament, he's Messiah. New Testament language, he's the Christ. Old Testament, yes, it, it foretold of his coming, uh, being descended from David. Isaiah 11, verses 1 and 2, for example. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Son of David. Uh, and Paul. Paul would later put you know, these two things uh, together. That he is a man in the line of David. And he is also the Lord God. Uh, Romans 1, 
2 to 4 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead who is Jesus son of David he's the Christ son of man and son of God he's the saviour of the world Paul put it neatly when he said he's both son of David and son of God. But Bartimaeus, blind as he was, he saw it first. He saw it first. He listened to what was being said about this man, Jesus. And by the grace of God, he comes to this conviction. Jesus of Nazareth, he's the Messiah. He's the saviour of the world. see it Have you come to that conviction yourself do you believe it that Jesus is the true Messiah the Christ the one who has come to save us from our sins believing this didn't make Bartimaeus popular they wanted him to shut up about it verse 39 and it happens doesn't it even, even in our time now you know people perhaps we're happy enough Bartimaeus that you believe that this man Jesus is the son of David but please don't ram it into our ears we don't want to hear it well they wanted him to be quiet but if you see it if you see that Jesus is the Christ you cannot keep quiet about it and that's exactly who he is he's the saviour of the world Second question, why has Jesus come? And the words of Bartimaeus here keep our focus sharp. He has come on a mercy mission. This is what Bartimaeus cries out for, believing that Christ has come to show God's mercy. And ultimately, Jesus has come to die in the place of sinners. He has spoken plainly about this to his disciples just previous in this chapter. He's en route now to Jerusalem for the Passover, like everyone else. But unknown to the crowds and unseen in this photo, um, Jesus goes as the Passover. He is the final Passover lamb. He will die in the place of his people. He will take their sin with him to the cross. He will suffer the wrath of God that our sin deserves. He goes as the sacrifice for sin. And why? Because it's mercy. Bartimaeus calls it mercy. And that mercy, it's, it's perfectly illustrated here in what Jesus does next. He stands still. He's heard this man's cry. He's not going to pass on by and pretend to don't hear him. He commands, bring him, bring him here, verse 40. And Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? It's a, it's a little test of faith. Jesus loves to hear his people come and ask for things. Do you believe that? Jesus loves his people to come and ask for things. Remember that this week. He loves you to come and ask for things. Don't be shy. Pray. We all have needs and concerns and worries and so on. Come to Jesus. He has mercy, plenty, in superabundance. What do you believe Jesus can do for you? Can he meet your deepest need? Bartimaeus, he believed so. And so he asked for it straight away. Lord, that I might receive my sight. And he gets it. He can see. Why has Jesus come? To show mercy. And it's not just about healing, just as you know, Bartimaeus understood about Jesus being the son of David. Um, you know, he knew about the prophecies uh, about the Messiah. The fact that he calls him son of David, you know, it shows an understanding. Jesus has come. What does it say of him? He comes to save, to open the eyes of the blind, to unstop the ears of the deaf, to heal the lame, to make the mute speak, Isaiah 35. He's come. He's come to save. 
kind of two ways we can answer this question why has jesus come and they're both true on one hand we can say that jesus christ came into the world to see of sinners 1 timothy 1 verse 15 this is a faithful saying worthy of all acceptance that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners that's the big picture that's you know all of the gospel in one line jesus has come to go to the cross to lay down his life for his sheep he's come to save his people from their sins and he will show mercy to all who repent and believe that's why he's here that's why he's passing through jericho that's why he's heading for jerusalem that's why he left glory and became a man he came into the world to save sinners but there's another way we can answer that question and i think luke really draws this out for us in this story about bartimaeus these eight verses about his encounter with jesus they are about his healing it's about his encounter with jesus it's about an individual encounter a personal encounter yes his coming is as luke told us in luke chapter 2 verse 10 good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people but that all people is made up of individual people people who may seem to the world as insignificant and unworthy but jesus stops on the outskirts of jericho for this one poor sinner in particular and he stops and he listens to the cries of this poor beggar i mean if there ever was an excuse not to stop and help a beggar well jesus had it i'm on a mission to save the world but those who cry out for mercy from the son of david they will not be disappointed why did jesus come he's come to save sinners but here he's come for bartimaeus has he come for you have you had this sort of personal encounter with jesus have you begged him for mercy have you asked him to save you from sin and hell i'm sure you know that he came from heaven to save sinners you've heard that i'm sure a thousand times maybe more but have you put your name in it can you say with paul in galatians 2 20 jesus loved me and he gave himself for me why has jesus come isn't the paul's full answer to timothy this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief last question what does it mean to follow jesus again bartimaeus he can teach us lots here we start at the beginning we find him begging at the side of a road just for money for help and then jesus is near and he hears it and so he begs for mercy he knows what he needs he needs mercy the sort of mercy that can only be found in the son of david this is where every believer begins holy spirit starts working in our hearts convinces us of sin our own sin convinces us of what we are truly like we're not okay we're not fairly decent we're not better than most people we're blind and we're beggars and we need mercy because we have a problem we can do nothing about we have sin and so we cry out to jesus no one else can take the wrath of god for us it must be him and so we call out to him and our, our following of jesus then begins what happens then well then the opposition starts doesn't it there are those in the crowd who say be quiet but those who know their need persist until jesus stops bartimaeus he knew he was blind he, you know he did 
didn't need a sermon preached to him to convince him that he could not see. He knew it. The most obvious thing in his condition. I wonder, do you know your condition then? Can you remember back? I know some of you were saved very, very young, and you can't remember back, and there's a blessing in that. Uh, but many of you, you can maybe remember when you became a Christian. You knew it most plainly. You knew it just as Barnabas knew he was blind. You knew you were a sinner. And no one but Jesus would do. And so you cried out to him and you were saved. Uh, perhaps others in your life, even in your family, said, Nah, I'll just be quiet about that. You're taking it all far too seriously. You're, you're too young to be a Christian or you're too old to be a Christian or whatever. You, know, you, you can't change now. Those voices of opposition, they do continue all through our life. The world, the flesh and the devil constantly wanting to take us away from following after Jesus. What should you do, believer, when the temptation comes to, to follow you know, a little less closely? Or a temptation that says, just leave that all behind. Well, in verse 39, Bartimaeus cried out, all the more. Jesus answered his prayer. It was a plea for mercy. And Jesus has plenty of mercy. Following Jesus also means coming to him personally. It's more than believing the right stuff about Jesus. You might believe fully this morning in the historicity of Jesus. Promised in the Old Testament. Announced by the angels born of a virgin Mary, grew up in Nazareth, ministered throughout Judah, crucified outside Jerusalem. You may well believe the supernatural works of God that he did. You may believe that he, that, that everything he said was right uh, and, and true. You can well believe that he rose again on the third day and ascended into heaven and now sits at the right hand of God the Father. You may believe that the Father and Son together send the Holy Spirit into the world. But believe in all of those facts. That's not saving faith. What does it mean to follow Jesus? Jesus told us back in Luke 9 verse 23. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. And our friend Bartimaeus, he illustrates this well in verse 43. Immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. He leaves his old life behind. Oh yes, he was aware of his need. He understood who Jesus was. He heard that Jesus was near. He, he cried out to Jesus despite the opposition. He comes to Jesus. He asked for the impossible. And he asked with faith. His eyes were opened, and he saw Jesus, and he was not disappointed. What did it mean for Bartimaeus to follow Jesus? It meant putting all of his trust and confidence into a man that he had never, ever seen. Trusting him for sight, for salvation. For everything. What does it mean for you and I to follow Jesus this morning? It means putting all of your trust and confidence in a man that you have never seen. Never seen with your eyes. And yet you do see by faith exactly who he is in Scripture. And you don't just see him, you've come to him. And you've been saved by him. And you're being transformed by him. And your life now is marked by thankfulness where you're giving glory to God. And it does mean doing that publicly so that others will see and hear and glorify God too. If you're a 
Christian this morning and take the words of Jesus to heart there in verse 42. Your faith has made you well. By faith, you know who he is. You know why he came. And you know what it means to follow him. So follow him. Follow him. Follow him with joy. Because you can say, it is well with my soul. Follow him with faithfulness. Even though others might want you to be quiet. Follow him closely. Because if you've truly met Jesus, like Bartimaeus, you'll know that that first encounter is just the beginning. Keep following Jesus. Keep your new spiritual eyesight on him. Amen. Let's pray about it, please. O oh, our Father in heaven, grant us grace, please, to see your Son, Jesus, clearer and clearer. That we would see who he is. Jesus in his deity. Jesus in his humanity. Jesus in his totality. Our saviour. The son of God and the son of David. Help us please to see him in all of his mercy. Help us to see our saviour as Christ crucified. For me. Lord, help us please to see Jesus as the one that we need right now. Not just one that we met years ago. Lord, by your grace, one that we meet every single day. And not just for a few minutes in the morning. We pray that we would see Jesus as the one who walks beside us every day. As the one who carries us every day open our eyes please Lord God that we might see your love